anybody that knows me at all knows I love fishing out of my tracker, my jet drive boat. I mean, this, this Mercury jet on this thing is able to get me to places that no other rig will. And I thoroughly enjoy the time that I spend fishing out of this thing. But it's winter time right now and time to do a little bit of maintenance on it. And I actually got something that I think I may have going on. So I want to dive into that right here. But, you know, winter time is a great time to work on any of your boats, but especially your jet drive. For me, something that's been going on here lately is I've lost a little bit of speed. My typical, I mean, now this thing <laughs> is not a speed demon, but I'm usually 28 miles an hour or so, and I'm, I've dropped back to like 25 or 26. Um, is about where I'm at, wide open, you know, just in flat water, no current or anything. A lot of times if that happens, it could be from dents in the hole, and there's not much I could do about that, but it also could have to do with my impeller and my my uh, wear liner in here. Now, I don't have a new impeller to go in it. I don't have a new wear liner to go in it, but I want to pull this foot apart and see if I can adjust those shims any at all to tighten up those tolerances. That It works kind of like a vacuum in that the tighter the tolerances are between the impeller and that housing that it fits around, the better the suction is going to be and you're going to get a little bit more performance out of it. Now, again, I've lost at best two miles an hour but I want to try to do everything I can to, uh, you know, to get all the speed that I can out of this thing. So this is not going to be a drastic fix by any means, but it's something that is not terribly hard to do. So I'm going to go ahead and start unbolting this, get inside of this thing and see what I can come up with. So to start with, you're going to take, these are all lock nuts. I'm going to take all these lock nuts off. And then uh, once I get those off, this bottom grate will just set off as well as that ring that's right there on the inside. If it looks funny with me running tools instead of a rod and reel, it feels funny too. But I'm actually more handy than most people would give me credit for. Not Maybe not my brother, but not as, not as handy as he is. The thing about this too, it's a good time just to get inside of there and look and you know, make sure you don't have any fishing line or leftover grass or anything like that stuck in there too. Last one here, so now it's gonna, gonna wanna come off. So just gotta hold up on it a little bit. And that's if, if you run a jet much, especially on a flat bottom, you'd actually be well served to carry a spare one of these, just that bottom grate. Um, guys that I have fished with growing up some, before we ran tunnel holes, there'd be some days these grates would come back and didn't look so well. At the end of the day, that's why I like a tunnel holes because it does protect um, protect that part of the motor. So that is um, that's what it looks like from the inside, just that, that bowl that fits down into there, um, and then this part here, this ring, actually is a serviceable item too. So you can see now before I pull that off, this is the tolerance that I'm talking about that that you want to be. It can't be touching, but it won't, you need it to be really, really tight. And it looks really close right now, so I may not do myself any good by trying to adjust um, adjust these shims. But this between this impeller and this lining, it's it's pretty doggone close, just to be quite honest. So I'm going to try to adjust these shims. The shims are behind this nut right here. So my next step is going to be to open up these little flanges on each side, and then I'm going to take that nut off. And the washers are stacked on top of this, so I'm going to pull all those off, and then I'm going to pull the impeller out, and then I'm going to put one of these washers back on the top, which will drop this just a little bit. If I can do that without that making contact, then I've tightened it up some. If it makes contact, then it's as tight as it can be right now, and all this was for nothing. But that is, if you ever run into this issue, you'll then know how to fix it. Okay, so the best way to do this. Just take a flat screwdriver. You just want to take these flanges. You're just going to open them up. Okay. So now I've actually, I got to get this ring out here off, and then I can take the nut and the rest of that loose. I might have to pry it off of there. A little bit of sand and grit. Sounds like in there. Probably from a river in Texas, if I was guessing. 
had really good fishing in it, so it was worth it. It could be from here at the house. But you can hear some of that sand and grit. So there's all that part. So that is a serviceable ring. And now you can see, and that could be where more of my issues coming from than my shims, but you can see I've definitely wore some grooves in that and that's from sucking up gravel, rock, um, not so much grass or leaves or anything, but it wouldn't be a bad idea for me to order one of these from Mercury and get, get it coming. So it's definitely got some, you can, you can hear the grooves and stuff in that. That's the thing is any, any thing that goes through there, it wears a little bit. This is aluminum, that's aluminum. It's designed to wear a little bit. If it was stainless, you'd end up getting chips and, and stuff would actually break. And when it would break, you wouldn't be able to get in. So the fact that it's aluminum allows it to just wear off. You'll lose a little performance over time, but it's not gonna actually break anything. That's why it's, uh, that's why it's made out of, out of the kind of material that it's made out of, is for just that reason. So, so I've got that off. And, and again, you can see here on my impeller, it's got some dings and places where it's picked up rocks. I'll probably actually take a file and, uh, and file that down a little bit while I've got it off. Um, I think I'll actually do that. I'll, I'll try to clean, clean those edges of it up a little bit just to make it a little prettier. But I'm gonna go ahead and take it off now. I've got me a big crescent wrench here. So I'm gonna go ahead. And that, that nut there, that's the, you notice I, I, I didn't have to put a lot of pressure on it. It's got that little lock deal that holds it there because that connects straight through to the drive shaft on the engine and short of prying it on there um you know actually having to you know force something here to lock it on you you don't want to over tighten that it just needs to be snug and then it's got that deal there to lock it in place so that's the thing with that it's not going to be extremely tight um it just needs to be on there just good and snug so take that off and now i'm going to take all these washers and everything right here. I want to get all this stuff together so I don't drop any of it and misplace them. So that's how those go. There's a little rubber washer. Okay, so that is how everything was stacked up on there, just like that. I'll set it over here the same way. So there is the impeller. A little bit of water in there. Dump that out. But that's the impeller. So those are really the two parts. From there, it goes to the drive shaft. The rest of that, that's the bowl. Water goes up into that, squirts out the back. Uh, there's really very, very little to a jet drive, to be, to be completely honest. They are a very simple um, piece of work. So here on the top side, you can see there's one, one shim there on the top. And that, that's the way it comes from the factory. So there's just that one. So I'm gonna set it out as well, just so I don't misplace it or drop it or something. But one shim is what, what was on the top of that impeller. So, so I'm gonna get a file now just by hand, file these edges off here some. Uh, they've definitely got a little bit of lip. That could, that's no doubt causing a little bit of performance issue. Am I going to file that and gain five miles an hour? Absolutely not, but I'll feel better about it since I've got it apart this, this far just to clean it up a little bit before I put it back together. Let me set this over here. So if this is going to, it's going to take that file and just, it's not too rough on this top side, but that back side of it is definitely the rougher part. But, That's the good thing with it being aluminum. It's, it's not terribly hard to clean up there a little bit. I feel a little bit like Edwin Evers right now. Seems like he's always building something or welding, welding on something or tearing it apart or whatever. That's good enough for today's effort anyway, because that's, that's never going to be something that you, I mean, it's good to clean the rough places off of them. But like I said earlier, you're not going to work on that and polish it and make it, uh, make it change it by 10 miles an hour or anything. So 
Just a couple final things before I go to put it back together. I just want to wipe off, just kind of wipe off any dirt, sand, anything excess, you know, that I can see right here. So just so that everything will go back in there easily and be cleaner than it was when I, when I took it apart. Okay. So now we had one shim on the top. So I'm going to actually add one more to that. So that's the one that was there. I'm going to take one that was on the bottom and I'm going to put it on the top. The shim that was on there and then I added one more to the top of the thing. And like I said, I don't know if this is going to be too tight, um, but I'll show you how we'll test that here in a minute. So I've got two shims on there and then there's one side of that impeller is actually flat. It's got, a, it's got that little tooth part down in there that's flat and that's what goes on that flat part of the... Uh, of the drive shaft coming out of there. So I may just have to put, go ahead and put those on there. And then turn it around to where it's got my seat. There we go. Okay, so that is all the way up. And now I can take all the rest of my washers, put those. And that one also has just one way that it will go. Run that nut up. You just gotta make sure that everything works its way completely. Completely up on there. So then when you go to tighten it down, you know that you're snugged up all the way. So as you can see, I've still got a little bit of play there. I gotta get took out of it. really kind of compressed down. Yeah, so that's really good and snug. So I'm not going to actually bend these tabs back down just yet because I want to set this ring back up on there and see just how it is. If it's good, I'll pull it off. I'll bend those down. I'll be good to go because you only get so many bends out of a piece like that before it ends up breaking. So let's line this right on back up on there. It's definitely not touching all the way around. Um, it is for sure closer. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bend those tabs down because I think I'm gonna be in good shape, feel pretty good about it. But uh, button it back up. You wanna make sure that that is down really good and tight on there. So all the rest of that's tight. Okay. That's I'm gonna wipe this ring. Just that little bit of sand or grit, anything could keep uh, keep it from fitting back quite like it should. Let's see, it goes like that. Okay. Just get me a couple of these nuts started, enough to hold it. That is exactly, um, I can tell by how much pressure I'm putting on that. That's exactly like 23 and a half foot pounds of torque is, it, is it what I tighten those with. Um, it's really important that you make sure that you get that exactly right. And I, it's possible I actually could put another shim on the top. I, I'm gonna run it like this. And if I saw a little increase in speed, I'll be happy with it. Um, if I didn't see much, I'll probably pull it off and try to go another shim. So that's what I'm gonna do for now. That's where I'm gonna leave it. But I hope that this, um, hope this helps you understand how the inside of a jet motor works. Really not much to it. Um, it's extremely simple. And this is only like the second or third time I've ever had one apart. So it's neat for me. It's something that I'm still learning a little bit about. The most simple thing, and I'll, I'll show you right here in the back of my tracker, right in here with some spare life jackets, I keep a little small grease gun. Um, this little grease gun, this is the easiest thing to do, the easiest part of maintenance you'll ever do on your jet uh, outboard. Over here on the, it would be on the port side of the engine, there's a little uh, grease tube 
and a grease fitting, it, it recommends that there's even a sticker right here on the motor that says it, that it recommends you do this after every day of fishing, you know, if you've run the motor much at all. I'll do it every, if I run a long ways, I'll do it every day. If I just ran a little bit, I'll do it every two or three trips. But I, I've had friends that had no idea they had a jet motor for a year and never greased this bearing. It's really important that you grease this bearing or you're not, you're gonna end up wearing that, uh, that bearing out. You'll be out there one day and it'll seize up on you. So just snap that onto there and, and you're just gonna give it just enough, of a, just enough of a squirt to where it shoots a little bit of grease out of it. And that's all you wanna do. Once you get grease there, you're good. Just pull your grease gun back off, snap that hose back on, and that's it. So, I mean, that little tube is going to last me a couple of years. No more grease than what I have to put in it than that. And it's super easy to keep, you know, keep it right back here in the back. It doesn't make a mess. And it's right there every time that I need, that I think about it and want to, uh, you know, want to score a little bit of grease in there. So, very easy thing. Make sure you grease that bearing on your Mercury Outboard Jet Drive. It'll last you a lot longer.